Welcome back to Your Turn to Rant. Your weekly, your monthly, uh, your source for theories and character analysis on Nankada's Your Turn to Die. I finally returned with another video, and in my opinion, it's a good one. Also, be sure to stick around until the very end. I've got an announcement for the future of this channel, which you'll hopefully be interested in. Enough about that though, let's discuss now Egokoro. At first glance, she may seem like only one of many great, well-rounded characters in the game. She may even fade into the background when compared to some of the more assertive and vocal characters. However, she serves an important function in the narrative, one I don't think any other character conveys as well as she does. In this video, we're going to examine Nao's character arc and how it closely follows the beats of a coming-of-age story. She starts the game as a passive person who relies a lot on others and is content in that role. But when she experiences loss for the first time, she seems to fall apart completely, only to pull herself back together and grow in a way no one had expected her to. It shouldn't need to be said, but there will be spoilers abound for your turn to die from this point on. As always, if you aren't caught up to the most recent part, you should do so immediately and then come back to this video. Don't worry, I'll wait. Now then, let's jump right in. So what does coming of age even mean? Basically, a coming of age story focuses on a character's mental, emotional, and personal growth as they make the transition from childhood to adulthood. The character in question is usually faced with a situation that propels them out of the safety of childhood. Arguably though, the most important conflict happens within the character, as they struggle to make sense of the world around them, as well as their place within it. The coming of age story tends to begin with us, the audience, meeting the character when they are still a child, innocent to the world beyond what they currently know. In a similar way, now starts the game straddling the line between adolescence and adulthood, having recently graduated high school. She has just taken her first steps into the adult world when she and Professor Mishima are kidnapped by Asunaro. When we first meet now, she is panicking over waking up in the facility alongside the others. We can glean quite a bit about now just by this first impression. To begin, her first words are, is there no one here who can explain? Her reaction is passive. She's hoping that someone will step up and just tell her what's going on. Compare that reaction to someone like Keiji, an adult who takes an active role by suggesting that everyone confirm what they know. When it comes time for the group to make introductions, she interjects when Keiji voices his suspicion of Professor Mishima. Mishima then informs the group that she is a former student of his. The first piece of information we get about now is given to us not by Nao herself, but by her high school teacher. Soon after this, Nao offers to introduce herself to the group so they'll realize there's nothing suspicious about her or her professor. Before even giving her name, she repeats that she is Mishima's former student. The fact that she brings up her connection to Mishima first in her introduction stands out to me. It's as if that is a more important aspect of her identity to her than her own name. I think it's also important to note that Nao is his former student. Despite him no longer being her teacher, she's still very dependent upon Mishima. Now credits her having gone to an art college solely to her professor, insisting that he's a good person. Then, when questioned about the first trial, she says that it had been scary, but thankfully, Mishima had instructed her on what to do the entire time. It's because of him that she was able to stay calm in such a dangerous and frightening situation. Interestingly, her interpretation of the first trial is at odds with Mishima's. He tells Sarah that he and Nao had been able to escape thanks to their combined wits. Saved by my own student, he adds. It's very possible that Nao is more capable than she thinks. But the important thing is that Nao believes that Mishima is the reason she survived. This is the outlook that Nao operates from at the start of the game. Mishima is one of the most important authority figures in her life, and she believes she owes everything to him. At this moment, she's certain that she will always have Mishima in her life, constantly there to guide her when she needs him. Just as is the case in most coming-of-age stories, there tends to be at least one authority figure that the child character looks up to and depends upon. They are the ones who inform the character's perspective on and beliefs of the world. It's when something happens to this authority figure, or when they are separated from them, that the character no longer has a safety net and is forced to grow up. Up until the second trial, Nao takes a passive role and defers to the others around her, especially adults she trusts, like Professor Mishima. She is content to depend on those who are more vocal and confident than she is. So when Mishima pulls her aside during the second trial and suggests they vote for each other, she goes along with it. Even though he doesn't give her a reason why they should, Nao trusts Mishima completely because he's an authority figure she looks up to. She doesn't even think to question him, but when it comes time to vote, Mishima votes for himself out of a desire to protect his student. And since he had received the most votes, Sumaili executes him. Nao's teacher, the one person she had depended upon this entire time, dies painfully in front of her very eyes. 
she's unable to do anything to help him. Worse, he stops her from even trying. Until the very end, Mishima puts his student's safety above his own. I'd argue that this is when Nao goes through a loss of innocence. In literature, this is when a child character experiences a traumatic event that forces them to shed their previous naivety. In Nao's case, losing Mishima has a profound effect on her. Not only has she just witnessed someone die a horrific death, but that person was someone who she was extremely close to. From this moment on, Nao will never be the same again. She has to live with the weight of her professor's death, as well as the knowledge that she was unable to stop it. In a coming-of-age story, a major conflict propels the character out of the safety of childhood. The death game is exactly that major conflict for now. She has no choice but to go through several trials and games in order to survive. Not just that, but she now no longer has her beloved authority figure there to guide her through the literal trials ahead. She must rely on her own will instead. At first, Nao is completely unprepared for this. Chapter 1 Part 2 opens on her kneeling beside Professor Mishima's body. She's unable to comprehend the fact that he is dead. She goes so far as to grab his lifeless body and beg for him to wake up. Only for... Well... So no head? When a voice tells the group to exit the pink room so that Mishima's corpse can be retrieved, Nao loses any composure she had left. Panicking, she runs away with the professor's head. This forces the group to split up and look for her. While Sarah and the others search, Nao goes to the cafeteria, where she runs into Kai. Being an adult and in a better mental state than her, he is able to manipulate her without much difficulty. He pretends to help Nao by bringing her into the kitchen and praising her for standing up to the kidnappers. When thinking back to this encounter, she says that Kai protected her, when in reality, he was just using the situation to his benefit. During the main game, Nao is shocked when Kai accuses her of lying and making up the encounter. This is most likely the first time an adult has manipulated her into doing something morally questionable. Maybe she hadn't considered the possibility that not all adults have her safety or happiness in mind, like Professor Mishima did. At least, not the adults that she thought were helping her. She seems to realize this once she remembers all the details of their conversation. Kai, who initially protected her, had lied to her and hadn't kept his promise to keep her safe. I feel like this situation serves as an important lesson to now once the group moves on to the next floor. More on that later. First, let's take a look at what happens when Sarah, Keiji, and Gin find Nao in the kitchen. She's hostile in the beginning, believing that they want to take her professor from her, but calms down when Sarah assures her this isn't the case. Eventually, she admits that what she's doing is wrong. She shouldn't act this way forever. Then she asks Sarah, what should I do? With Professor Mishima gone, Nao doesn't have an authority figure to support her. She's all on her own. Up until this point, she has refused to accept the fact that he's dead. Before Sarah and the others found her, she had sat in the dark with the box and questioned Mishima over and over. But he never responded. That was how she knew that her beloved teacher was gone. Which is why she turns to Sarah and questions her on what to do. Now that Mishima is dead, Nao is unconsciously looking for someone to fill the space he left behind. She's still the young girl who was navigating high school with help from her teacher. She isn't confident in her own abilities and needs someone to tell her what to do and protect her from danger. Enter Sarah and Reko. Sarah is the one who now looks to for guidance. Despite Sarah being younger than her, Nao has formed a connection with her and trusts in her judgment, which is why she becomes the person who Nao goes to with any issues she has. So when Sarah tells her to keep living and finish her painting of Mishima, Nao agrees almost immediately. She can't die before she has finished her painting. In order to do that, she needs to survive the death game. Now that she is provided with a goal to reach for, Nao has the courage she needs to face forward. The fact that Sarah has become one of Nao's authority figures couldn't be clearer than when they entered the main game. When Alice claims to be suspicious of Sarah, Nao is among the first people to stand up for her. She even mentions wanting Alice to repent for his words. Interestingly, that's similar to what she told Keiji when he openly suspected Mishima. And more than once in the main game, Sarah is shown to step forward and calm Nao when she starts getting too worked up. Sarah's words have a calming effect on her, similar to how Mishima was able to keep Nao calm during the first trial. Meanwhile, Reko is the person who Nao can depend on for protection. Reko does this even before Mishima's death. Whenever Nao is in trouble or is upset, she intervenes on her behalf, like when Reko told Nao to stay behind with her and Kana instead of searching the facility with the others. This urge to protect Nao only grows stronger after Mishima's death. It's important that Reko is the one who overheard Mishima and Nao's conversation before the vote in the second trial. From that moment on, she consistently shuts down anyone who casts suspicion on Nao. Reko recognizes the vulnerable position Nao is in and wants to protect her however she can. Thus, Sarah is the one who Nao turns to for guidance, while Reko protects her when necessary. Together, Sarah and Reko perform a similar function for Nao that Mishima did. Of course, she can't depend on them forever. This is a coming-of-age story after all. Nao's development takes another abrupt turn when the group enters the monitor room on the third floor. 
There, they come face to face or face to screen with Mishima's AI. Now is understandably shocked and unable to believe it's really him. But there's no way she wouldn't recognize him. Though he is an AI created by their kidnappers, the similarities are uncanny. The way he looks, acts, and talks are all like the professor she knew and admired. She quickly becomes enthralled by Mishima's AI. After some time, Sarah notes that this fixation may be detrimental for now. When she calls out to her, now ignores her. She's so focused on her professor that she isn't paying attention to her surroundings. Just when she had resolved to move forward, to survive, now is sidetracked by Mishima's AI. At this rate, she may be too distracted to complete the subgame, which would result in her death. While Sarah's role is to guide now as Mishima had done in the past, she isn't able to fulfill it at this time. With Joe's death so fresh in her mind, Sarah is in no state to help her. Needless to say, things aren't looking good for now. Thankfully, an innocuous comment from Mishima snaps her out of her trance. He acknowledges how difficult things have been, before adding that he's glad she has friends with her. Now is caught off guard by that statement, especially by that one word he used, friend. Mishima doubles down, saying age and length of association don't matter. To him, it's clear that Now has found a group of friends, since they are helping and supporting each other through a dangerous situation. Even when Reko had brought up the possibility earlier, Now had been surprised by it, and not because she doesn't consider them to be friends. She has just been too caught up in her grief to acknowledge those bonds properly. And then there's the fact that she has been relying so heavily on Sarah and Reko. She treated them more as authority figures, who she could depend upon for guidance and protection. Now she's realizing that maybe their relationship doesn't have to be so unequal. Mishima's words help her to see that. She knows now that she needs to move on from her professor's death. By ignoring her situation and focusing only on Mishima's AI, Now is clinging to the past, to the time when she was a child who needed someone to tell her what to do. It's time for her to face her reality and grow. She has constantly relied on the others, and now she wants to help them like they have helped her. She mentions Sarah and Reko by name in her speech to Mishima, which makes it obvious that she feels especially indebted to them. They are the ones who she's particularly close to. Mishima and Sarah both comment on how strong Now has become. Though she doesn't see herself that way, Sarah is moved by her decision to leave Mishima behind and accept that he's gone. Her actions inspire Sarah to try and face the reality of her situation as well. It's in this moment that Now's dynamic with Sarah and Reko starts to shift, because this is when Now takes her first real steps into adulthood. Of course, change often isn't linear or immediate. Although Now makes a decision to move on, in a moment of weakness, she seeks out Mishima's AI only to spot Reko leaving the monitor room with a bloody fist, before learning that the last vestige of her professor is gone. Now doesn't immediately cast suspicion on Reko though, even if Sarah outright asks her if she has any idea who broke the monitor. Instead, she tells the group not to look for the culprit. She remains firm on her stance to move forward, while trying not to think the worst of one of her best friends. From that moment on, Now works hard to try and survive the death game. She enters attractions and takes part in token trades. Eventually, she has enough tokens to purchase a victim video, which she buys in an effort to find a way to escape. Too afraid to watch it alone, Now asks Sarah to join her. She isn't asking her for guidance, she just wants Sarah to support her as a friend would. You know, if you asked your friend to watch a video of a stranger's brutal execution with you. Just a normal Tuesday night. Ultimately, Now isn't able to pay attention to the video, because she's unable to bear the woman's pain. She apologizes to Sarah and calls her strong for managing to stomach it better. Sarah is then struck by the fact that she wasn't phased at all by the death she saw in the video. When she says she's lost it, Now comforts her, assuring Sarah that she hasn't lost anything. This time, Now is the one who calms Sarah down, and not the other way around. Their relationship is no longer one-sided. They're friends now, equals who take turns supporting each other. We also see a shift in her relationship with Reko. After Sarah and Reko's trip to the Room of Lies, Now approaches Sarah with some concerns. She has noticed that Reko has been acting strange. She's cold and her attitude is off. She adds that if Reko is shouldering something, then she wants to know what it is, because they're friends. She doesn't want her to carry that burden on her own. This is yet another indication that Now is working on becoming more self-sufficient. She wants to be a person that her friends can lean on for support. She's also not as absorbed in her own pain. Before, she'd been so distraught over her professor's death that she ran away, forcing the group to search for her instead of trying to find a way out of the facility. Now, she's conscious of what the others are up to. Furthermore, she's reluctant to depend solely on Sarah and Reko, which she has been doing up until this point. But now realizes that she doesn't have enough clear chips, she reaches out to Alice, despite still being intimidated by him. She doesn't want to ask the girls for help, so she asks Alice if he'd be interested in a trade. Sometime later, Sarah overhears Now thanking Alice for helping her out, and notes that they seem to have grown closer. Now has learned how to reach out to people outside of her close circle for support, finding it not as difficult as it initially appeared. Her decision to avoid seeking Sarah and Reko out for help is something that will happen again in the game, and in a much more dramatic way. More on that later.
The change in Nao's disposition is especially stark when the final attraction begins. Sierra, Reko, and Nao are separated from the rest of the group, trapped atop the impression room, while Kitaro and Gin are restrained back to back. As the countdown begins, with Gin's life hanging in the balance, the girls are forced to figure out the point behind the arbitration room. Although Reko is skeptical about finding a way to save Gin, Nao refuses to give up hope. Just like during the main game, Sierra manages to calm her down, until she's able to think clearly. Unlike the main game, however, Nao takes an active role in the discussions. Despite Reko believing the three of them are irrelevant to the attraction, Nao points out that only they can see the timer and display, as well as the fact that they have a special invitation from Rearranger. This leads her to the realization that the impression room is meant to be a punishment for them. Later, she voices exactly what they must do to save Gin. One of them has to fall on a bed of spikes to activate a switch. Nao is also the one who recognizes the web of happiness found in the room of lies might be, well, a lie. She then goes on to point out how strange Reko has been acting. The entire discussion up until this moment, Reko has made disparaging remarks and was adamant that they wouldn't be able to save Gin. Her comment on giving up on him convinces Nao that she isn't acting like her usual self. When Sarah reprimands the two of them for fighting, Nao insists that she's calm. This time around, she doesn't need her help to stay focused on what's important. She knows that there's something wrong with Reko, and it started ever since she broke Mishima's monitor. As the mystery deepens, and the group comes to the conclusion that the Reko before them is a fake, Nao is certain they need to drop her onto the bed of spikes. Both Sarah and Reko are taken aback by how confident she is. Reko calls her brave yet brainwashed, while Sarah notes it's not like her. I wonder if her determination to save Gin stems from what happened to Mishima. During the second trial, Nao had no way of saving her beloved teacher. She could only watch him die as a helpless bystander. Now, she wants to ensure no one else goes through what he did. If that means pushing a fake Reko to her death, it's a sacrifice she's willing to make. However, toward the end of the scene, Sarah wrestles with the thought of sacrificing the fake Reko. She may only be a copy of her friend, but that doesn't mean she isn't a person with her own complex feelings and emotions. If you choose to keep pushing her anyway, now intervenes. She's the one who ultimately pushes the fake Reko onto the spikes. She tells a stunned Sarah, you don't have to shoulder any more. Now protects not just Gin, but also Sarah. She takes responsibility for the fake Reko's death, out of a desire to save Sarah from the weight of that decision. Unknowingly, she also ensures that the real Reko doesn't die at the fake's hands. Her act of pushing the fake Reko is paralleled in the Alice route as well. There, Rearranger forces Now to choose between the two Rekos. The one she doesn't choose will die. The fake Reko uses the knife given by Ranger to threaten Now into choosing her, but she doesn't fall for it. Now knows that even a copy of Reko wouldn't be able to hurt her friends. Then she chooses the real Reko because she wants to save the person who had staunchly protected her all this time. Regardless of the route, Now chooses to save the real Reko while keeping Sarah from having to make that tough decision. And in doing so, she repays her two closest friends for the constant support they have shown her. In the second part of chapter 2, Nao is standing in front of another dead body. This time, however, she's more prepared for it. Instead of going into denial or rushing off, she does what she can to comfort the remaining Yawusame sibling. If Alice died, Nao reaches out to a grieving Reko even when Sarah is at a loss for words. She then tells Sarah to leave Reko to her. Nao is confident that she could support her, and Sarah notes to herself how dependable she looks. She has become the kind of person who her closest friends can rely on, just as she had hoped to earlier. Meanwhile, if Rekka was the one who died, Nao is visibly devastated. Still, she makes the decision to keep moving forward and encourages Alice to do the same. She takes Rekka's gloves and gives one to her brother, with the mindset that she needs to deliver it to someone who also cares about Rekko. To do that, she needs to survive the death game. Having gone through loss before, she's better prepared for losing another loved one. Instead of letting it consume her, she makes a conscious effort to keep going. Her actions, both during the final attraction and in the Room of Lies, are proof of how far Nao has come. She is no longer the girl who cowered in a dark room, questioning her dead professor over and over again and receiving no response. She has become a woman who can stand on her own two feet and make the tough decisions, right or wrong, and live with them. Her development doesn't end there either. There's still an important event left for us to discuss, one that really consolidates the coming of age arc she's been on throughout the game. After the final attraction, Gashu informs the group that the second main game is going to be a bit different than the first. The roll cards will be distributed through their voting tablets, and they'll be able to use other people's tokens to trade cards if they wish. Then he tells them they only have three hours before the main game begins. Morale is low when Gashu leaves, and we are given an opportunity to choose Sarah's response to the situation. If Sarah doesn't say anything, it's Nao who steps up and tries to rally the group. She insists she won't give up, and that there must be a way to escape. Her resolve hasn't shaken, despite all that's happened. 
When the group disperses to enter their separate rooms, we don't know what happens to the others. We only see Sarah's perspective. And so we are preoccupied with Sarah's interaction with Keiji and the mystery he presents to her. How had Kai gotten to the third floor? And what clue did Keiji find relating to him and his laptop? On the first playthrough of the game, we follow Sarah and Keiji as they run into Nao on their way to the Room of Rubble. She's in the lobby and calls out to Sarah. When Sarah asks her what's wrong though, Nao doesn't respond. Nankadai purposely drags on this moment. The lights in Nao's eyes disappear as she thinks, before she smiles and says that she shouldn't be sitting still. She should be thinking about a way to escape as well. Keiji catches on to her initial hesitation, and after a moment, so does Sarah. This is our first introduction to Keiji's partner ability, his detective vision. He notices that Sarah had the same eyes as him, those of a shrewd detective who never overlooks the heart's unrest. He adds that Sarah sensed something shady about Nao, and Sarah asks if he means that Nao is hiding something. Keiji answers, that he doesn't know. Ultimately, this doesn't keep their attention for long. Sarah and Keiji are more focused on the mystery surrounding Kai and his laptop. But hindsight is 2020. We know now that she had been hiding something during this interaction, and it was important. Thanks to certain things now says, and the short moments we catch as players, it's easier to piece together what the start of the trading phase looked like for her. When Nao leaves the medical office and walks into her room, she must have noticed the ring-up box that Gashu had mentioned. But there is something else waiting for her as well. A blank monitor, inexplicably set up next to her bed. She likely didn't have much time to wonder why it was there, since the trading phase begins the moment everyone enters their rooms. The roll card now receives is the sacrifice. Worse, she doesn't have enough tokens to trade it away. This severely limits her options. If Nao wants to live, she'll have to get everyone to vote for her in the main game and then watch them all die. If she fails or can't bring herself to doom her friends, she'll be brutally executed. She is faced with a bleak future, no matter what she does. Gashu takes advantage of her bewildered state, which he had created by giving her the sacrifice in the first place. The blank monitor in her room turns on, and she's reunited for a second time with Professor Mishima. Naturally, she confides in him. He's the only one she can tell about her hopeless situation. And wouldn't you know it, Mishima knows of a way she can survive. All she needs to do is go to the Room of Lies, search the Yabusame sibling's dead body, and use their tokens to give the sacrifice to Kyutaro. No big deal, right? When Nao encounters Sarah and Keiji in the lobby, she must have recently left her room and been conflicted over what to do. Her first instinct is to reach out to Sarah, despite knowing that telling anyone she's a sacrifice would be detrimental to her. But then she thinks better of it. As Keiji notes, her heart's in unrest. She's trying to figure out what the right thing to do is. You can actually encounter Nao again in the Room of Lies if you don't immediately go to the Room of Rubble. Inside, she stares at the body of Alice or Reko, saying nothing. Sarah isn't able to speak with her though because Keiji stresses that they don't have the time. Initially, we believe that Nao is still upset over the events of the final attraction. In actuality, she's there to search for the tokens, which she eventually finds and uses to trade with Kutaro. Playing as Sarah, us players only see the tail end of Nao's trek. She enters her room and expresses regret over having made the trade. Now Kutaro is in the same desperate situation as she was. She asks her professor, what should I do? Just like how she used to ask him for guidance in the past. Now has reverted back to the child she used to be, who didn't have the confidence to make decisions for herself. Mishima's AI informs her that he has been brought back to protect her, and he insists that she do as he says. He's exerting control over her as an authority figure. Now is still hesitant, but she goes along with it anyway. At some point after this interaction, Mishima's AI instructs her to steal Kai's laptop and retrieve Rearranger's chip under the guise of helping the group escape. He also insists that she not tell anyone. Now agrees to do just that. And why would she say no? He's her beloved professor who's looking out for her even now. She wouldn't doubt him of all people. Except for the fact that he's not really Mishima. He's a warped version of him, created by Gashu to take back control of the main game. He doesn't want them to take advantage of the instability between the floor masters and escape. The laptop and chip are loose ends that the group can use to do just that, which can't be allowed to happen. So Gashu decides to manipulate Nao into helping him by using Mishima's AI. It's a good plan, only Nao sees through his attempt. Again, we aren't given a solid timeline of events, since these developments were set up as twists for us players. But Nao does tell Sarah that at first, she genuinely believed that Mishima had been brought back, only to quickly come to her senses. It could have been before or after she traded the sacrifice, we don't know. Regardless, her bond with Mishima is stronger than Gashu thinks. They've known each other for years, and so she quickly noticed that he wasn't acting like his usual self. Not to mention that she must have learned a thing or two since the last time an adult she trusted had instructed her to steal the laptop from So. Now is no longer an impressionable child. She's an adult who is capable of making her own decisions, which is why she only pretends to go along with the fake Mishima's plan. 
While she does consider telling Sarah everything, she has the thought that the AI might have accounted for that, so she makes the decision to team up with So instead. From there, she pretends to double-cross Sarah and reprimands her in front of the fake Mashima, to ensure he doesn't realize the truth. Though we don't know how much of the plan was So's idea, this instance still proves Nao's quick thinking and resourcefulness. She hadn't had her closest friends to rely on, yet she still managed to fool the fake Mashima long enough to loop So into the situation. That was all her doing, and indicative of how much she's grown in such little time. Now is rewarded for her character growth by helping So find a way for everyone to escape the facility. She's one step closer to achieving her goal of surviving the death game and finishing her painting of Mashima. Sure, she'll probably need therapy for the rest of her life, but at least her continued survival is guaranteed. The future is hers to do with as she pleases. Her coming-of-age story is complete. Unfortunately, the narrative and Asunaro have other plans. Not only is now unable to escape the facility, but moments before their three hours are up, there's a trade. And wouldn't you know it, she receives the sacrifice for a second time. It's like the worst and deadliest game of hot potato. Now has little choice but to keep quiet about her role and lie to the others. She doesn't want to die after all. But the truth is revealed anyway as the group slowly figures out who among them has which card. Not just that, but Sarah uncovers a lot of key information about the death game project. Like how there's a difference between candidates and participants. Candidates are the people who have the qualifications to win, and now is the only person alive who isn't a candidate. Which is why Gashu intervened during the final trade and ensured the sacrifice went to Nao, and not Kana. He wanted to prevent the possibility of Nao winning the death game at all costs, even at the expense of his own life. It's a very cruel twist. Nao was never meant to survive. She was only brought in to help bolster Mashima's chance of survival. If you were to look at the situation very cynically, her close bond with Mashima became the noose around her neck or, in this case, her stomach. Her misfortune doesn't end there. Despite the group discovering Gashu's transgression, they still aren't able to postpone the main game. By killing himself, Gashu ensures that they aren't given another opportunity to escape. Now's fate is officially sealed. Since everyone knows she is the sacrifice, no one is willing to vote for her. Or so it seems. When everyone has cast their votes, with only Sarah left as the tiebreaker, Now speaks up. She tells Sarah that if she votes for her, the resulting tie would be enough for Now to win. And if she does that, Now will pick her to be the only other person spared from death. In a way, the offer is tempting. Voting for Now will bring the death game to a premature end. Sure, all of their friends will be dead as a result. But hey, at least Now and Sarah survive. I know there are people who think this ending, appropriately titled the massacre ending, weakens Nao's character arc. After all, it paints her in a horrific light. She was so desperate to live that she didn't care if everyone else died. That's an evil, selfish thing to do, isn't it? So why would Nan Kadai have now urged Sarah to vote for her anyway? There's a line that Mishima's AI says to Sarah, which I believe explains why the massacre ending isn't a disservice to Nao's character. When talking about how the original Mishima sacrificed himself for Nao, he says, no human wants to die. The survival instincts that kick in in desperate situations can at times result in demonic actions. Several times over, Nan Kadai makes his main characters contemplate and even follow through on terrible actions in an effort to save themselves. The desire to live is a part of human nature. You can't define that desire as being good or evil. It just is. Sometimes it results in good things, like the group working together to escape the facility. And other times you get Nao and Sarah betraying the others so they can finally end the nightmare they've been trapped in. The massacre ending even shows us how strong Nao has become, in a warped way. Sarah has essentially given up hope on successfully escaping with everyone. All that's left is her desire to live, which is why she takes Nao up on her offer. After everyone has been executed by Sophilin, Nao comforts Sarah. To me, it's reminiscent of the scene where they had watched the victim video together. Now tells Sarah that she'll take care of her from now on, and reassures her by saying that Sarah did nothing wrong. She'll bear the cross of betraying the others for them both. Sarah may have made the ultimate decision, but now insists on shouldering the immense guilt in her stead. That's a pretty mature action for her to take, and one she might have even done before, if she pushed the fake Rekko to her death. Meanwhile, if Sarah votes for So or Kana, now accepts it. She's even glad that Sarah hadn't taken her up on her offer, which was made out of a desperation to live. Because Sarah hadn't voted for her, that meant she hadn't betrayed everyone. Ultimately, she hadn't wanted everyone to die. Her survival instincts had pushed her to contemplate something demonic, but that impulse doesn't define her. Now comes to terms with her execution. However, that doesn't mean she wants to die. Before the start of her execution, Cephalin gives Sarah an instant death switch. 
If she uses it, Nao won't have to suffer for a long time. Yet every time she pushes it, Nao begs her not to do it again. She wants to live for as long as she can, even if every second will be spent in painful agony. Whether Sarah uses the switch or not, Nao eventually expires. Despite her best attempts, she isn't able to escape the death game, nor does she finish her painting of Professor Mishima. Most coming-of-age stories tend to end in some kind of triumph. The child character has gone through grueling situations, but they manage to pull through and grow in the process. They may have lost their innocence, but now they are more confident and better able to navigate the world of adults. Arguably, Nao's character arc has followed the trajectory of a coming-of-age story. She gets thrown into a dangerous situation, loses her innocence and her authority figure, and manages to pull herself together in time to overcome the difficulties she was faced with. So why does she die anyway? It just feels so futile for her to have come all this way, only to be forced into a scenario where she can't win, literally. I think that sense of futility is supposed to be the point. To some, Nao may have been a character who didn't have any use, like Kyutaro points out in the first main game. She's a burden to the group after Mishima's death, because they spend precious time they don't have searching for her. But she soon overcomes the death of her teacher, finding the strength she needs to move forward. She manages to become someone that her friends can rely on for support, which is why it's so devastating stating to learn that now isn't a candidate. She's a participant who was meant to help Mishima's chance of survival. Asunara didn't care about whether she lived or died, until she became a liability. Joe and Kugie had served their purposes and been killed for their efforts, but not now. She stuck around long enough to become a loose end that needed to be taken care of. Now was doomed from the start. She was never supposed to survive for as long as she did. Nankadai has her undergo a coming-of-age arc to make us notice just how capable and confident she can be. But before we or now can reach some kind of catharsis, he undermines the story he'd built by killing her off. Her death shows us just how callous and relentless Asunaro is in their quest to further the death game project and achieve their ends. They're willing to trample on the lives of others, even those who went through adversity and grew stronger in spite of it. I never thought I'd say this, but Midori has a point. He sums up the tragedy of her story perfectly. Now was a kind and heartfelt girl. It's cruel to die before seeing adulthood. Her coming of age story might have been cut short by Asunaro, but her friends, and us players, recognize Now's worth. She may not have been important to the organization in the grand scheme of things, but her memory lives on in the group, who remained determined to disrupt the death game project in her stead. Regardless of what happens next, it won't negate the courage and resilience now displayed by refusing to give up hope on escaping with her friends. If you stuck around this far, you deserve a gold star. Thank you for that. As well as for the 1,000 subscribers, what the hell? I was hoping to reach this milestone one day, but that day came faster than I expected. <laughs> I really do love making scripts and videos for this channel, as slow as I am with releasing them. Which is why I had the idea of doing something a little different than my usual content in the near future. If enough people are interested, I'm considering recording a let's play where I revisit your turn to die in its entirety. Of course, it won't be a blind playthrough. I've played this game several times over now, so this let's play will be different. Instead of just going through the game again, I'll be discussing theories, themes, and character analysis while I play. Who knows, maybe we'll even solve some mysteries that Nankidai set up by revisiting the game this way. These videos would also be largely unscripted, unlike my content thus far. If that's something you'd be interested in watching, let me know in a comment below. Either way, there will be more videos to come in the upcoming year. And that's it for this video. See you again in 5 months, or sooner if there's enough interest. If you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and check the community page for updates.